Hello and welcome to the book show on Diversity Television. I'm Ava Colopy, a writer of fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. My work often focuses on social issues and the personal experience of them. We are here in Ireland, the land of literature, poetry, and academia. A very fitting place to be. And today I'm going to talk about a book called Grassroots and the authors uh, Jennifer Baumgardner and Amy Richards, who are pretty well known in the feminist sphere in the United States. So these two authors are known for their book Manifesta about modern feminism. I have not had a chance to read that. I have not had the time. Baumgardner is known for her other books, including Look Both Ways, Bisexual Politics, which gets into how this group of people that she's a part of is often ignored even in the GLBT community, and she gets into some of those issues that are generally not talked about. She has a book also called Abortion and Life, which takes it out of the heated debate about it as an issue and actually did something really innovative, which was to bring up the personal stories of individual women and of couples who've had abortions and what their experience was. Um, some of them went on to have uh, children later. Or uh, it might be like um, with my one grandmother who had an abortion after she already had her four kids and they really just couldn't afford another one. So it works both ways. But um, it's, very, it's very interesting and I didn't have a chance to read the whole book, but it gets into just the personal experience of it instead of being very detached from it and arguing your view on it, it gets into the personal experience and how it actually affects people one way or another if something is maybe illegal or illegal. And uh, the photo, the, the photo for the book, the cover photo, is actually the author so pregnant she looks about ready to burst. So it is not an anti-pregnancy or anti-family book, which is very, very important also. But Grassroots here is, um, I would say it's not necessarily a book for politically left people, so I don't want you to have watched this far and go, well, then I'm not interested in it because I'm, I'm not really into uh, to feminism. Well, that's not the point. The point is it may be grounded in their experience of doing feminist uh, activism work, but the, the general principles and methods would apply to any particular issue that you want to take on. And that's why I uh, recommend it. Now, I don't have my copy because I gave it to the volunteer coordinator of NARAL Pro-Choice Oregon a number of years ago, but there you go. That is the book cover. And, um, Quite frankly, why I gave it to her is my, my opinion at the time is that the women in that office were having a very pleasant time running the office and were not actually being very effective at the job. So at the time, the campaign was uh, about Plan B emergency contraception, which is not an abortion pill and will not cause an abortion from, from what I've read and what I was told. And we were uh, trying to raise awareness of this, this product that at the time was a new one. It was, it was quite new on the market. And it came up that Walmart refused to stock it at their pharmacies. So I said, um, well, why don't, we, why don't we go to Walmart and, and have signs that say, hey, Walmart hates rape victims. Why don't we like do a real you know, cutting edge feminist thing here and do that? And, and no one was interested in doing that. And that is just one example there. Uh, there was a gay guy who worked there at the time who had previously worked for Planned Parenthood who was actually far more effective at his job because, you know, those, those gay men have to take a lot of crap to get through life and be out and proud of who they are. So he was, I think, less concerned about stepping on people's toes, whereas the women were like, let's play nice and have a nice office. And I'm, I'm sorry, that's not how you get social change. It's not how it works. But anyway, despite the book's focus on feminism, it is really in many ways a universal book. And by that, I mean the information it gives you about how to start movements at the ground level, how to raise awareness of an issue with a very small budget is very useful for anyone of any particular view, wants to take on any sort of issue, any sort of cause. So if you've ever wondered how charities get started, how a group raises awareness of a protest or other event they have on, 
this book will answer those questions. Now, some of it may be a bit out of date in regards to advances in social media since it was first published, but um, I think younger people won't have a lot of trouble adapting the information and the principles and methods to social media because uh, younger people, especially those younger than me, are just so used to being immersed in social media that I still think the book will be uh, quite relevant to you and you'll have no trouble adapting the concepts. So if you want to be an activist for one or many causes and you don't know how to get started, this book is kind of a must read as it explains the practical logistics of starting your movement. So I'm going to read an excerpt now. So now I will read the description because as I said, I gave away my copy of the book uh, many years ago, which is typical of me. I am quite the minimalist, so I often just give things, just give away. So, Grassroots is an activism handbook for social justice. Aimed at everyone from students to professionals, stay-at-home moms to artists, Grassroots answers the perennial question, what can I do? Whether you are concerned about the environment, human rights violations in Tibet, campus sexual assault policies, sweatshop labor, gay marriage, or the ongoing repercussions of 9-11, Jennifer Baumgartner and Amy Richards believe that we all have something to offer in the fight against injustice. Based on the author's own experiences and the stories of both of the large number of activists they work with, as well as the countless everyday people that have been, they have encountered over the years, Grassroots encourages people to move beyond the generic three, check writing, calling Congress people, and volunteering, and make a difference with clear guidelines and models for activism. The authors draw heavily on individual stories as examples, inspiring readers to recognize the tools right in front of them, be it the office copier or the family living room, in order to make change. Activism is accessible to all. And Grassroots shows how anyone, no matter how much or how little they have to offer, can create a world that more clearly reflects their values. So as I said, it tends to be focused and grounded in feminism, and I know some people are, are not into a feminism, which is, uh, is what it is. But I want to say in regards to feminism, I want to get into this word feminist because a lot of people today, including a lot of women, seem to think that it is a dirty word and they don't want to be associated with it, which is very interesting. So I want to point out that we should be clear that if it were not for feminists and the feminist movement, I wouldn't be on this show right now. I wouldn't have an education and neither would any women watching. And we certainly wouldn't have a show that is executive produced by a woman, Carol Asams. Without feminism, we would not have this. That is important to remember when we're talking about uh, feminists or feminism in a disparaging way. Maybe you don't like modern feminism, but if it weren't for this whole history of women's rights activists for gender equality, this would not even be happening right now. That's important to remember. And it's because of feminism that I and many women have voting rights. The feminist movement is why I decide what I wear. Whereas in, for example, Iran, the Iranian women themselves began a movement called White Wednesdays, hashtag White Wednesdays on social media, where women take off their black hijabs and wear white in public to try to fight for even this one little tiny fundamental basic right that if they don't want to wear a head covering in public, their opinion is they shouldn't have to. Now, I say it very clearly that way because I'm trying to impose my culture on them. It is their movement that they started because they are not happy about something. And it's only because of feminism in the West that I can decide what I want to wear and what I don't want to wear. And we forget about this when we um, overly criticize a feminism as a concept. And for example, in Saudi Arabia, where female rape victims are put in prison for so-called premarital or extramarital sex, and men are seen as not guilty of anything, which uh, used to be more how it was done in Christian society as well, but because of our feminist movement in the West, uh, that is not the way it's done now, generally speaking. So. 
So any and every right a woman has is because of feminism and feminists. This includes women feminist activists and also men uh, feminist activists throughout history. I'm not leaving men out of this. They are not out of this discussion and they have, there have also been uh, many uh, women's rights activists who were men who played small or large roles. Or at times, say in the 60s and 70s, when a lot of the feminists were coming out, there were situations where different women fighting for women's rights would have the option to keep pushing it, even if they lost their job, because they had a husband who was willing to support them and help them in that way. So even if he wasn't in the front line in feminist marches, he was in that support role, in that sort of quiet support role. So I would um, challenge viewers to not consider feminism or feminist to be a dirty or offensive word, as you and I and our mothers would have no rights without feminism. And by that I mean no rights recognized by the law. We would still have human rights, but they would not be supported by the law. So incidentally, the biggest feminist I've ever known in my entire life in person that I knew very closely personally was actually my father who really, really supported 50% uh, um, political representation of women. He really wanted to see at least 50% women in offices and pointed out how often uh, women he talked to said they were not going to vote for a woman, sometimes for seemingly no particular reason. And he was like, I don't know what it is, didn't like her haircut or something, decides not going to vote for that. And, and why? You think you'd want more women in politics to represent your experiences. And he also 100% supported um, all abortion rights, often said women need to have those rights in order to get abusive men out of their lives, to get away from abusive relationships. And this is often the case, um, except late-term abortions were a different, different matter. Um, in regards to abortion, by the way, uh, I am not pro-abortion, I am pro-choice. I perhaps naively think that no one is, and I hope that I'm right about that. So choice is different than being pro-choice is very different than being again um, for abortions and I'm against forced abortions because there's no choice in that. So all of that being said, I would like for us to have a discussion about feminism that doesn't act as if it is a dirty word or that feminists are necessarily these sort of terrible radicalist people because um, again, this wouldn't even be happening right now with this show and my opinions on it if it weren't for the feminist movement. So very important to think about that. Uh, that being said, for me, feminism is gender equality, not man-hating. I don't believe in hating different demographic groups of people like that. About sort of gender and race and all that sort of thing. And um, in regards to what I was saying earlier, I'm also not supporting, and diversity television would not support any sort of uh, overly sort of hateful bias against uh, Muslims or people from the Middle East. I've known people, at the time I've been in Ireland, I've met people from all different countries all over, including um, I've met people from Northern Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, Middle East, all over Asia, all sorts of places, definitely all over uh, South America and especially Brazil. And I have no hatred, promoting no hatred towards any uh, such group of people. That's absolutely not what is meant here. So, thank you for watching the book show on diversity television. I'm Ava Colby here in Ireland, and I hope you will join us again next time for more books and opinions. To all our viewers out there, I hope you find what you're looking for. Disinformation is spreading alongside the new coronavirus. To counter this, it is important to share information that comes from reliable sources, such as health authorities and the World Health Organization. During the COVID-19 outbreak, only trust official information sources and credible media outlets. Do not share unverified information. This is a message from UNESCO.